Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craft Tastic, and this is the second part of my series on using your silhouette. If you haven't seen part one, there's a link in the description box below where you can go check that out, and I'll also put it in the cards up above. Let's go ahead and get started with part two, where I show you how to add your cut lines and also how to do an offset. An offset is the white border or margin around an image for a die cut. You usually see them on die cuts and stickers. So now we're getting to the part of adding our cut lines. The cut lines are what tells the, silu the actual silhouette machine where to cut on the paper. So the whole process of that, first of all, I like to go ahead and get the page ready for a print and cut. And that's what we're doing with this is print and cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my registration lines. Um, that is in, what is the name of this part of the menu? Open the page setup panel. So that's in the page setup panel. So I open that and then I click on this icon that says registration marks. Then I have to go over here and turn them on. You're not gonna be able to print this and cut it without the registration marks. The Silhouette machine uses those marks to determine where to cut. It, it kind of gives the machine directions. Okay, this is the edge of the paper, this is the edge of the paper. So this is where everything needs to be cut. So I always choose type one. I don't know the difference uh, type 1 has always worked for me, and so I never explored anything to do with type 2. Um, so I've got my registration marks. You can go under the advanced panel and decrease the margin. Um, I will be careful with this depending on how your printer prints. If your printer isn't a borderless printer, like one of mine isn't. If you make the registration marks too close to the edge, they can be cut off when printing. If they get cut off when printing, it won't cut right in your machine, okay? So I'm gonna leave them as they are. I think the lowest that they can go, they're all at 0 0.625. The lowest that they can go is 0.394. But again, I'm gonna leave them. My thing was to try and use as much of the page as possible. I didn't want to waste anything. And sticker paper is a little on the pricey side. So I was trying to get as much on that page as possible. But what happens is you wind up printing on a page that you can't cut, or there's a possibility that it won't cut. And then you're wasting the whole sheet and not just an extra border. So. I learned my lesson about that. You want to stay out of these little hashed areas. You don't want to put any of your graphic there. So we're staying away from that. The next thing you need to do is go ahead and do your cut. So I'm going to go back to the trace panel. Then I'm going to do select trace area one more time. And we're going to select the whole cup like we did before and just say I, let's do it this way. So I'm going to select the whole area like I did before. But say you accidentally missed some of the image that you wanted to include in the trace area, you can always make it bigger. Let's see by pulling these little squares here and here. You can make it smaller. You can move it around just the whole box to make sure you get selected what you need selected. Okay, so we knew that the first time we did this, it was the threshold was needed to be at 80. This machine, the software is not an exact thing, so what worked the first time might not work the second time. 
I'm on 85. I'm just going to type it in and see if we get the same thing. Um, it looks a little different, but I'm going to go with it because we're only tracing the out, the outer edge. We choose trace outer edge. Okay. Now you can see that it traced the outer edge. If you can see this little red line, it's going all the way around. If I were to cut this, print this out and cut it right now, wherever you see that red line is where it would cut. And I'm not sure if it's sh coming through on the video, but the red line is all the way around. Okay. So now we're ready to adjust um, our cut line. If you want a small white border around the outer edge of your cup or whatever graphic you're using, then you would move on to this next step. If you're happy with it the way it is, then you would just reduce the size now. Let's, let me make a copy because I might want to come back to this part of the, to this step. So again, if you feel like you want to save something that you might want to use later, make a copy and just drag it off of the artboard. It's not going to hurt anything over there. It's not going to interfere. And again, don't forget to save. So I want to show you that, yes, the red line does go all the way around. See there? But let's do a undo or go backwards to put that back. Okay. So I've saved one over to the side with the exact cut line around the object. Now I want to make one that gives me that white border, kind of like a die cut. The die cuts have the white border around them. That's what I'm looking for for my stickers. So I'm going to have to be very careful and try to select just the red line. You put your cursor over the red line. This is kind of tricky, especially with something where you can barely see the red line. And right click on your mouse or whatever you need to do to get this little menu that comes up, whatever your alternative is for right clicking. You can actually, let's, you can also select it and go over here and find the offset menu. Here it is. Okay, that's not normally what I do, but you can do it that way. Just select the red line and go to the offset menu. Or like I said, you can right click on the line with the cursor on the line and do offset. You get to the same place. But it automatically does the offset when you do it this way. And the offset distance is set at 0.125. It's totally up to you. Um how you want to do your offset, how, how big of an offset you want. But I'm keeping in mind that I'm going to reduce the size of this drastically. So I'm going to leave it at 0.125 inches and I'm just going to click apply. Because when I make this graphic smaller, that offset is also going to decrease. So I'm going to leave it. It looks awfully big now, but in the end, it will be smaller. But what you need to remember to do when you do this offset is to get rid of the original cut line. Because if you don't, it's going to cut both of those lines. And we don't want that, both of the red lines. So now I've got my offset. My object is cleaned up, ready to go. I'm selecting both of those and I'm going to group them. So you go to Object, Group. What that does is keeps them together so that when I need to move them, I'm not worried about, oops, I didn't select the other one and it's not, it's off center and you just keep everything together. It reduces the work later. So at this point, I have the full size. I have my quarter, no, my eighth of an inch offset, I'm going to make another copy because I might want to come back to this point, say it at a later date. I want to make some die cuts. I want my full size image 
with the full size offset available. So I'm going to do a control C, control V. Control C, control V. That's control C to copy, control V to paste. So now I have my full size cup on the artboard. I have my backup copies of the whole process. One more thing I, I want to explain with graphics. You can always make things smaller, but unless you have a vector image, which is something like an SVG file, making things bigger will cause you to lose clarity and clearness in your graphic. So just remember, you can always make it smaller, but don't try to make it bigger. See how I got that out of whack? I should have grouped it. So I'm going to come up here to my alignment panel and align center. I've selected both of those and align up and down middle. And let me go ahead and group so I don't mess it up again. So once I make this smaller, this particular graphic, I will not come back and make this, this bigger. I save these two over here at the full size so that if I need to make a different size, I can use those. It's not a good idea, even with the, even if the image started out to be a larger image to make it small and then try to make it big again. That's why you save the full size image. Okay, let's get on to making the stickers. So I have everything set up and ready to go. It's grouped. Basically, all I need to do is go to one of the corners, any of the four corners. You hover over that corner, hold the shift key, and drag to the size that you want it to be. You can do it that way. You can resize that way. Or you can go up here, select your image, and go up here to where the W and the H are. Make sure that this lock is locked. This forces the aspect to remain the same. By aspect, this is what I mean. If I change this to one inch, that's the height. If I change that width to one inch, the height will automatically adjust so that the, ratio, the aspect ratio of my object will remain the same. This I've noticed in the planner community a lot. People don't do this. So let's just say I, I want to resize this image. You don't just drag an image like that. Okay, That's out of proportion. The, the cup does not look like that. Okay use the corner to drag and move and resize. Now it appears that Silhouette has made an adjustment when you're using the quarter that corner to pull that you don't need the shift key to keep it in the correct aspect ratio, but I think it's still a good idea to do that. If you get in the habit of doing that when you're working with graphics, then and it works up across platforms, then no matter which one you if you're doing something in Microsoft Word and you hold down that shift key when you're resizing your graphics in that, they will remain in proportion. So that's a tip. Always hold the shift key down when you're resizing a graphic. So also you can see that in silhouette, it shows you what the measurements are on the height and the width. I think I want mine to be about one inch tall. So what I can do is make sure my aspect, aspect ratio is locked and just go on and type one inch up here. Okay, so it automatically keeps that ratio together. In proportion. Now I'm thinking, oh, that's a little too tall because I don't want a sticker that's too 
0.631 inches tall. So let's go ahead. I, I put one inch for the width, but I think I want it to be one inch high. So I'm going to change that and put one inch in the height. Okay, that looks extremely small, but it works for what I want to do. So now we have our first sticker, and this is a pretty long video, so I think I'm going to stop it here. And in the next video, I'll show you how to actually turn this into a sheet of stickers. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I will talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.